Okay, so hello and welcome. This is your GM in the Barrier, broadcasting from the center of your entertainment galaxy. We are back today with another game of Star Trek Adventures Aegis, our 22nd century uh, Star Trek game following the crew of a Daedalus-class vessel, the uh, titular Aegis. Uh, we are starting off tonight, uh, we're starting off tonight, coming back to uh, our third episode, and before we get started, I just wanted to go around the horn on a few promotional elements. Uh, first, as far as uh, this channel's content, uh, Aegis is going to be back at running at its usual time on 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, um, that's 6 p.m. GMT. Uh, Broken Sword will also be coming back with a new episode uh, coming this Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so I think 5 Pacific. Um, all of them here on this Twitch channel, which for those watching on the archive, uh, links are in the description there. Uh, for any announcements here, um, by all means, I would suggest first off checking the Twitter, which would be uh, at GM underscore barrier. Uh, for those watching live, that's in the Twitch chat. And, of course, if you haven't been keeping up with these or are just getting into it now, you can catch up with the archive. Uh, again, post it in the link. If you are watching from the archive, then you don't need me to give you a link, I think. Um, but there are playlists together that have the complete run of both Aegis and Broken Sword. Uh, before we get into a recap, I did want to allow one of our other players to shout something out. Uh, by all means, Ben, take it away. Yes, so I will be running um, an, a streamed game on the Bardic Inspiration Network, um, which is a Power Rangers game using the Power Rangers RPG. The very short pitch is basically Stargate Atlantis meets Power Rangers. Um, and yeah, that's what I've got. I'll drop a link. We're still looking for players at the moment. We haven't got a certain time uh, yet. I can drop a link in the chats just to the application form or to a tweet announcing it, but probably just the form, which will have some more details there. By all means, and I'm also going ahead and dropping a link to uh, the Bardic Inspiration Network on Twitch. Uh, go ahead and give them a follow if that sounds interesting to you. I, uh, Frankly, uh, mashing up Stargate with anything uh, is always a fun prospect to me, but the... Uh, it sounds like an interesting thing, and if you're uh, if you're interested in giving it a play, then be sure to uh, check out the other link in the Twitch here uh, for those interested. And uh, we may have a link in the archive video. Uh, ben will chat on that later. Yes, I'll I'll get round to you on that. Yeah. Yep. But anyway, uh, before we got going here, anyone else want to shout anything out before we get started? Just to our GM, who I really appreciate that I run this game really regularly, and I very much enjoyed it. Uh, your your kind words are the cosmic wind beneath my wings, and now that you have attempted to butter the GM up, I make no promises that it will pay back. No, I, I, I know. <laughs> I know. No buttering will help me. <laughs> yes. Nothing can save you now. It Maybe you can save yourselves. We'll find that's out. That's the hope. That's, that's really all Romanov hopes to do sometimes. Yep. So, uh, picking up where we last left off, uh, the Aegis arrived in the uh, Eta Cassiopeiae system. Um, it is the star system that is home to human uh, humanity's first attempt at an extrasolar colony. Um also known as Terra Nova. The colony had been cut off for many years after an incident uh, seemed to leave them destroyed, and it was so early in humanity's venture out that they'd been, um, they hadn't been able to send a ship there fast enough to find out what happened. Um, a few years prior to the events of the game, of course, uh, the Enterprise, uh, the NX-01 Enterprise, uh, visited the colony and discovered that there were indeed survivors who had uh, reverted back to a slightly more 
primitive society or something closer to a Neolithic level technology. A few stragglers from uh, the modern tech that they brought with them. Um, in any case, they'd long since be, been relocated and Earth was in the process of establishing a new colony, uh, both with new people here and with um, the Novans that were being integrated into the colony together. So a sort of harmony was being present. Um, the Aegis was sent to provide them some desperately needed supplies um, when en route to the colony they encountered a Vulcan shuttle being chased by a Tandaran cruiser. Um, the Vulcan, a man by the name of Saral, who is, suffice to say is the slightest bit unconventional, um, was brought aboard the Aegis and Colonel Sharp had successfully convinced the Tandarans to not open fire and give them a moment to work things out, um, which the, at least the Tandarans didn't wind up shooting at the Aegis, but they did retreat, ultimately, um, allowing for the Aegis to proceed unimpeded to Terra Nova. Uh, when you arrived in the system, however, there was some sort of radiation that was producing a scattering effect in the atmosphere and prevented you from raising either communications, sensors, or engaging transporters. Uh, the first shuttle pod that went down um, was an, uh, it held an away team led by uh, Lieutenant Eula Shira, the ship's tactical officer. Uh, and included Dr. Lambeth, Aleska Romanov, um, a science, or someone from the science department, an ensign steward, and everyone's new favorite pilot, Chief Willie D. Justice. Um, your arrival on the surface found the colony seemingly, like, just absolutely torn up in a sense, or like signs that it had been fortified, it had come under attack. You were reading only maybe around 70-some people out of a population that was supposed to be over 300. And when you arrived, you came under attack. Uh, that attack was very quickly averted, however. Um, and you found out from the leaders of the colony that the Novans had apparently started attacking the human colonists that had arrived from Earth. Um, as you attempted to figure out what was going on uh, back in orbit, the Aegis was forced to retreat uh, when they detected a full Tandaran squadron on approach. Um, Colonel Sharp was hoping to draw off the Tandarans, but they seemed to have taken up residence over uh, Terra Nova. And so the Colonel uh, is attempting to figure out what's going on there. Meanwhile, uh, the landing party tried to get some more information out of uh, the people on the surface. Um, from your best estimate, um, uh, the, make, uh, the sole remaining Mako on the colony, one Major Samuel Cole, is showing signs of uh, maybe a few General Ripper-esque qualities, or uh, otherwise is just generally interested in taking the fight to the Novans because he's sick of losing people. Um, everyone else is just very tired of the conflict, and really there's no lead on what's going on. Um, but the colony did come under attack once again. Um, unusually, it seems as though the Novans possess a mortar system of some sort and briefly bombarded the colony site. Um, there seems to have been at least one malfunction that forced them to retreat, um, and they're starting to make a run. Uh, after Shira and Cole had a chance to confer, you agreed to just take the Mako team that was dropped in a second shuttle pod, along with the remains of the landing party, um, and Major Cole himself, uh, all to chase after the... Um, to chase after the errant Novans that uh, tried to raid the landing party. Um, it's not given you much of a moment to catch your breath, um, and certainly hasn't given Dr. Lambeth a moment to figure out what was going on with the scanner after he found a blood sample on some shrapnel that was uh, giving him weird readings. But 
let us go ahead and pick up from where we left off on the or like at the colony um at this point um the uh, the full group consisting of lieutenant shira aleska romanov uh dr lambeth along with the mako ground team that was dropped and uh major cole from the colony itself are making a bit of a sprint in order to intercept the uh or try to intercept the novans it's really going to be more um you know trying to close the distance and catch up after the initial chase um or rather after the bombardment ceased and they started retreating um in addition to yourselves on the ground uh as you can tell from the roar in the skies above two shuttle pods from aegis are presently flying about over the area able to provide some reconnaissance uh, air support if needs be um and they've been helping you track the novens that are here um, it is at this point that i would say you have uh, been able to run well past the colony's main settlement and uh the from the area you are currently in i would say that you've probably made it up to um about the area where they were setting up the shelling um you can tell this at least in part based on what appears to have been uh, signs of uh, carbon scoring maybe a bit of a crater uh, signs that uh, one of the mortars had gone awry a little bit earlier so cole is going to slow down for a moment just to take a look at this and uh, just kind of scoffs a little bit oh, glad to know they're uh, at least a little less destructive now I have a little less capability. I would still love to know how they got mortars. Uh, this, I don't think that this stuff came standard. It wasn't in the, uh, it wasn't in the supply manifest. So someone's given them a mortar. Presumably you don't have arms manufacturing back at, back at the colony. Now, we, uh, we're a pretty small settlement, mostly it's, uh, it seems to be dedicated to just keeping the place self-sufficient, trying to grow this. So, any recent visitors from other ships? So, no, uh... Uh, there's not quite a beat's worth of pause, but there, there's just the slightest, uh, very slight pause there. Uh, if they, if anyone's dropped by, I wouldn't know about it. Well, they got these mortars from somewhere. Yeah. And they certainly didn't make them themselves. Yeah. No way to say. Uh, no way to say for sure. I guess one way or the other. Uh, our best chance, though, is to catch up with them. Try to ask them uh, who wound up supplying these, and uh, clean things up from there. Yeah, agreed. Let's uh, let's keep moving then. Yep. Uh, the Makos are tracking behind you, Romanov and uh, Dr. Lambeth. I'll, I'll actually ask you both to roll me just a quick fitness and medicine roll. Um, Romanov, in your case, I think that the uh, the Susman focus has partial emphasis on endurance, so I, I would... I would think so. <laughs> I would agree. You can hear me, right? Yep, we can hear you. Okay. Yep. Fitness um, and what was the second one? Fitness and fitness and medicine. Okay. Oh no. <laughs> okay, so. Oh, doctor. Oh no. 
yeah, he's he's not the fittest person. <laughs> and he dies. <laughs> Heart attack, of course. Well, the uh, the character was looking to catch up when the player suddenly suffered from cardiac arrest, and thus the pursuit ended. Uh, I'm not going to leave. If Lambeth is having any issues, I will hold back and mm. uh, fall back to his position, and I'll call it up to the front. Well, uh, let's let's start off by checking in first, uh, Dr. Lambeth. Obviously, you have uh, scored a complication there, along with no successes, so you're a little bit winded. Um, so far as... Mo right, I'm looking at what was in the tank last time, as it were, for momentum. Uh, you had ended the session on a full stack. Uh, since time has passed, or we've transitioned here, I'd probably take two out of that pile, just for starters. So, um, your options at this point, you could spend two momentum to buy off the complication. You could give the GM threat, or you can accept a narrative complication. What would you prefer to do? Um, so, so it's give you threat or spend momentum to buy off narrative complication? Uh, yeah, the, your three choices are, um, buy off the complication altogether with two momentum, uh, give the GM threat, or accept a narrative complication. But the choice on which of those three is entirely up to you. How, how do we all feel about losing two momentum? out of the gate probably not great how much momentum do we have right now um Four, yeah i believe you are correct ben. yeah i'm fine with that all right i will spend two momentum please all right um uh, while we are we are waiting for our captain to return here um if would somebody like to take over as designated momentum officer otherwise i can just keep track here i'll do it all right i will deal out your remaining two uh, momentum to our armory officer there you go lieutenant um so yeah um dr lambeth it, it's maybe it's been the the time that uh, you've been spending an artificial gravity. It doesn't have quite the same pull. Maybe it's just that uh, your muscles were meant... Uh, you've always trained more for the quick sprint as opposed to the long endurance run. Uh, that's undoubtedly served you better uh, in better on Vega than it did... Um, than did anything else. Uh, but yeah, the, the long run is... Uh, proving to be a little bit hard on you you very nearly trip in what is uh what would appear to be the hole uh dug by or by a hole dug by some sort of gopher analog or something of the sort uh there's vague awareness of some sort of tunneling mole armadillo mix of some sort um that the novins simply referred to them as diggers but you, you very narrowly miss that. I will say part of that is uh, Romanov helping to catch you. And it's a good thing, too, because you very nearly uh, land on your scanner. And uh, oh, with it open right now, one only wonders what information you might have accidentally cleared out completely if your thumb had gone in the wrong direction. <laughs> yeah, that would have been bad. Thank goodness that didn't happen. Yes, yes. Oh, that's one less complication. Anyway, yeah, uh, but yeah, you are you're trying to catch your breath here as you see the the two other makos out ahead um, at the lead, plus the four uh, kind of forming an echelon with them. Um, have paused for a moment, but they start picking up the run right away. Uh, Romanov, for your part, you are kind of. It, at the rear, it took you. Uh, you didn't quite catch up with the, with the rest of the armed group. Um, okay. But but, but it I'm was with Lambert, right? I'm with Lambert, right? Yes, and as okay. a as as a reminder, there, Brian. Uh, there's there's no R in there. It's Lambeth. Lambeth. Thank you. Yes. 
So. Yeah, so you, you do help him. Uh, you do help him as he staggers a little bit, uh, but yes, you're. Otherwise, uh, you're feeling a, a nice opportunity to stretch your legs again, at the very least. Lambeth, you ready to roll? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I'm all good. Um, okay. Apart from, obviously, not all, all good, but I'm basically all good. If I was yeah. just a trip up, oh. I'll be on my way. Okay. I'm going to stick right next to him, then. And I'm going to play rear guard. And I'll call that up to whoever's lead. No. I, I just had to say uh, in my best Ron Howard voice, he wasn't all good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good old Arrested Development. Anyway, um, yeah, so you you help the, uh, you help the dock along and you continue the sprint and... Overhead, the, the shuttle pods are still gliding along uh, from up from the top. There is at least the view of one Mako pilot and one Chief Willie D. Justice, who is serving as your eyes in the sky, as it were. And let, let's back this out so that everybody gets the gag. <laughs> Hopefully. Uh, I'll just, I'll momentarily move the screen over just a little bit. There we go. Eh, close enough. Anyway. <laughs> yes, the, from the perch in the sky, um, along with the Mako pilot, uh, Chief Justice can clearly see that uh, the... Uh, there are Novins on his sensors making their way through a forested area, and the, the Makos are giving firm chase. But it will still be uh, just a little ways yet before the landing party can intercept them. So, while we, are, while we wait on that, let's take a quick trip back to the level. Uh, not the level, the Aegis. The level isn't there yet. Oh, dear. Uh, let's check back in. Um, Colonel Sharp, where would you be uh, right at this point as you are uh, waiting for, I think at this point, uh, either you were going to give orders to Mr. Crichton or you were about to receive a report. I, I don't remember what we discussed. Um, you got a pressure on me. I just walked in. Um, <laughs> what was the report about? Um can you message me that or something? Oh, like that? Let, let's just pick up the scene from here, because I, I don't think sure. that you've given him the orders with regard to the probe yet. Uh, no, not at all. Yep. Um, so let's. I'm, let... I'm I'm waiting. I'm waiting to meet up with the level first. Yep. Before giving i before having in, insane ideas. Yep. Um, so, Mister Cry, uh, you come back onto the bridge after uh, reviewing. The latest sensor data, which unfortunately shows that the um, the Tandarans have taken up and uh, taken up orbital positions, uh, effectively blockading Terra Nova. Uh, when Mr. Crichton reports, yeah. sir, I have uh, the latest uh, reports coming in. Um, the level has acknowledged our signal, and they will be here in under an hour at this point. They're pushing warp. Uh, maximum warp as hard as they can. Um, the Republic is also on an intercept course. They are slightly closer, but, well, it's one of those old Intrepid class cruisers, so they're going to be... Uh, they're not going to be here quite as quickly. Uh, what's the maximum warp for the Intrepid? Out of character. Uh, I believe it's 3.5, sir. Okay. Um... That was out of character, but I appreciate Crichton also answering. Um, I know no boundaries, fourth wall or otherwise. I'm <laughs> um, from him. <laughs> not done again. She'll think about it for a moment and say, thank you, Crichton, uh, and switch over to engines. Um, engine room, how are we doing with, with our engines? Uh, 
uh, engine room reporting here. Um, I think that we could uh, we could push uh, high warp again if we need to. Um, Romanov left it in pretty good shape before we uh, before they had to set off, and we are keeping things uh, nice and set here. Uh, reactors uh, perform nominally. Impulse, warp drive, and thrusters should all be available for you, Captain. Excellent. Let's sprint a little bit. Let's uh, redline or warp a bit. You, what, what you wanna you want me to push like four five four six four five for the moment uh, Connolly looks to you uh, and says uh, are we are we going somewhere without the other ships no, I thought okay out of character I thought we were like trying to catch up to them like me me at center point oh no no no, no. Um, oh I okay. got you I I All figured right. that you that's were at a uh, you guys oh, yeah, had stopped so? for a moment. That's that's my okay. mistake. No no no, it's my mistake because I should have asked beforehand. Fair enough. Um, <sighs> I mean, we can have an intercept nope. if you like. Yeah, uh, she'll say, "Interim, get ready to." Uh, we're pushing the engines a little bit as soon as the uh, the level gets here. Well, uh, will do, Captain. Um, have we gotten any reports back, communication-wise or otherwise, uh, uh, so far from Starfleet Command or intelligence of why they're pushing this? Why the Tendarans are pushing this? Uh, How long has it been since the Tendaran Tendaran showed up? Uh, at this point, it has been a, at least a few hours. Uh, messages that you sent have uh, probably just been relaying back to subspace, and it's or through subspace back to Starfleet Command. So um, you're bound to get a hold of somebody from Starfleet or Mako here um, relatively shortly. It depends on whom you want to try and reach out to. Um, well, I'm sending, to, I definitely send command. I also want to send to, uh, section chief, uh, Mitchell as well. Um, because I, I, I don't want to go through the whole process. I want to know what the fuck's going on right now. Gotcha. Uh, gotcha. Even, even if I have to, sh uh, jump a few fences. Um, all right. Uh, yeah, I'll just wait. Gotta wait for uh, levels show up. Um, how, what's the delay for reception regarding the the probe? Because the probe's not sublight communication, right? It's the probe does have subspace capabilities. Uh, both okay. Of, both of the ones that you dumped are uh, have subspace capability. All right. It doesn't look like that the Tendarans have noticed the one around the planet yet, or mm. what? Let's actually run a quick roll to see that, because the planetary one would probably be visible here. Um, it's in deep, it's in low orbit, so uh, it probably has some some measure of camouflage thanks to the thing going on on the planet, but... Yeah. Let's have them run a reason and science roll. We will call this a difficulty, I'd say a difficulty of... At least three with the low orbit. Um, that will probably make it a bit more difficult for you to use that particular probe to help you. But we'll see what they can do first. Yeah. So they will score one success from their crew roll. And then can the ship push them the rest of the way? No, they do not detect the probe. Um, but... Crichton does report, we are getting pings back from the probe. It doesn't appear that they've been uh, detected at this point, Captain. All right. I am... Make sure that the lunar probe is offline for the moment. Acknowledged. Uh, I'm going to do one other roll for Mr. Crichton. And let's see. 
insight engineering and we'll call this uh, if somebody would like to roll for the ship here then he is about to roll a task that will require um, communications and engineering to assist here communication engineering yep. all right cool all right it's one okay and there's two uh Colonel, I believe I'm picking up some subspace uh, traffic between the Tendar and cruisers. Uh, I think it's a comm signal, sir. Uh, we yes, we we do have a read on at least the frequencies on their oper uh, that they are operating on, uh, Captain. But I, I I'm afraid I can't tell you much more than that. The uh, the encryption is quite considerable, and even if I could bring it up it would be very difficult to get the specific traffic there's still quite considerable uh, radiolytic interference in the atmosphere uh, it's producing far too much uh, white noise as it were um, and obviously it's scattering our sensors too so it's frankly any work with this probe is going to be exceptionally difficult without some means of breaking through that we have an hour Crichton, take your time with uh, what you have. If you get any, any few words or sentences, I'd be more than pleased. Mm. So, Crichton is going to try and do his damnedest on it. Um, while all this is going on, um, are you, do you have anything in mind besides uh, waiting for something to happen there, Colonel? Um... I'm going to get up and start looking at, um, I'm going to get up and go to the engineering and I'm going to ask about regarding the range of transporters now that we've modified it. Um, is it human safe now? Cause I, I believe we fixed it, right? Like my our transport now is ha doesn't have the slight error that everybody else does. Mm. I, the instructions you gave, uh, while they were helpful for um, the the site to site process, I don't think that they've so improved the resolution that uh, they are human safe in the long run. Like you, okay, you're probably generally fine with. Um, minimal use of the transporters but it is going to be the sort of thing where there are likely to frankly people do, at this point don't even truly understand that uh the transporters could be potentially spitting out like single bit errors and uh be unsafe in some manner i'm gonna go to the brig gotcha. think about it <laughs> So the the colonel goes to cool her heels, um, but she finds it's already occupied. And where is the where is my brig set? I demand to know where my brig set is. Uh, let's see. I'm just gonna try to find uh, Sorol. The brig has also been arrested. <laughs> oh no! I, I guess we could make an impromptu brig in the airlock. <laughs> Not again. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, let's just theater of the mind this while uh, I face technical errors behind the scenes here. So, uh, Colonel Sharp, you pass by a Mako guard uh, just outside the brig, and uh, they give you a nod before pressing a button to open the door. There are other guards inside, and sure enough, behind a... Uh, behind a transparent aluminum uh, double reinforced door there uh, in a very small cell it's uh, scarcely a closet really um, is the slightly uh, wild looking um, Vulcan man you picked up very recently a man who I should say that after some medical examinations or some medical data it seems much more likely he is indeed uh, quite Vulcan, or there's no reason to doubt that he is yeah, Vulcan. Yeah, for the moment. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, he's just kind of so well sitting kind of in a in a lotus position with his eyes closed, and as the door opens, it's that's curious. I was manifesting someone to talk to, and then the door opens. Funny how that happens. You well, as it happens, I do believe in coincidence. <laughs> you mentioned before how you've explored here and there and met various societies to uh, better understand them and their uh, interesting technologies. I've smile. traveled quite extensively, yes. What can you tell me about the Dendarans lately? When was the last time you met them outside of uh, just yesterday? Well, I've, in, I've avoided most of the interactions with this particular piece of space since their war with the Soliban, if you want to call it that. They have become much more paranoid and unfriendly. Um, what would I know about them? Give me... Let's call this... Uh, how about a role of uh, definitely reason and let's say... Oh, I think it's either command or security and so far as discerning that um that's ah, both the same yep um i could offer as a focus investigation or really stretch it with linguistics i uh, <laughs> it's not great it's not really is it <laughs> nah, I, I don't think I can give the focus. Yet. But it is only no, difficulty one. Oh god. Um... <laughs> <laughs> wow. Seems to bad. be that kind of day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we we have a <laughs> Oh dear. Uh, Soral, you have rolled a complication um, and have not succeeded at the task. So, um, not only do you, uh, well, I guess first we have to ask. Um, you have two momentum left. Do you want to uh, do you want to beg the crew for the momentum to buy it off? Would you prefer to give the GM threat, or would you prefer to take a narrative complication? Uh, I would take the narrative complication. Okay. Mostly because I have absolutely no idea what that would possibly be. Okay, I... <laughs> you have met them. They're more kind. <laughs> <laughs> I have what? Uh, I was going to say, uh, I, I will give you an option here. Um, otherwise, I can come up with something else to that effect. Uh if you if you can think of something that you could say that would make this situation significantly worse, or that you think would, uh, mm. I, I will give you the chance to do that. Oh, what could mm, I have? Mm, I don't know. Hmm. I, I suppose I have one thing in mind. Uh, yeah, hit me. I, I, I would love to uh, say something to get me terribly in trouble, but I can't think of anything that would like make this particular situation worse. Uh, let me let me shoot you a message here via the roll twenty. There you go. That bad enough for you? Ah, uh, sure. <laughs> um, 
Well, they have increased their their hostilities with the cabal significantly in the last couple of months. Um, I'm not exactly sure why. I'm very intrigued by the cabal. Um, I've tried to get in contact several of times because I really want to know what they're up to. Um, anything that makes someone else so angry has to be interesting, at least. Um, uh, I had some some contact with some of the agents, but they are. <sighs> Untrustworthy? Agents of the Cabal? Or the I th I th at least, At least that's what they call themselves. <sighs> she, you, she gives that kind of slow sign. And what exactly did you converse? What topics? In what regard? Well, that's the thing. I want to know what they're up to. They, they, they seem some. Uh, they seem to be up to something big. To have uh, aroused the anger of some of such a big part of the of the local area. Um, but they they just they just they kind of they kind of expect the kind of commitment that I'm not ready to give before they tell you anything. It's like a. Uh, uh, Catch-22. How unfortunate. She says with a straight face. It is! It's like this mystery is right before my eyes. and <sighs> Anything else you can tell me regarding the Hindarns? Or simply that you are curious about their uh, paramilitary opposition and well they have taken to putting the suliban in internment camps um even the ones not involved in the cabal just out of sheer principle so make your conclusions from that um the way they reacted to me not submitting to a completely unjustified search in neutral space uh hints at uh, significant authoritative militaristic tendencies very well aware. She can slow non small small um, small plaintive smile. What so, you, you I have seem... to ask, given your nature and uh, ha curiosities, what brings you this far out into the rim? There isn't exactly too much of technological uh, of interest n near Terra. Or any of the Starfleet's area. Well, I was on my way to uh, for a friend, I guess, on uh, Dinobulus, who has some quite fascinating ideas about uh, the medical applications of some of the finer, uh, uh, finer applications of some toxic plants uh, in the surrounding systems. And uh, we wanted to spend a couple of months looking into that. Bullshit check, GM. Uh, you can you can attempt to insight him with a uh, insight command, Saral. You could, if you have any reason to contest, then you can do so. If you don't, then it's just a difficulty one check. Otherwise, it meets with uh, whatever Saral has, uh, which uh, for Saral, I believe. Command and control would come into play if you were contesting. Um, Diplomacy for focus. Yeah, I'll I'll give it in this case. Okay. Uh, um, I'm I'm not not contesting. Okay. Um, it's what I what I will say is that it, uh, it's it's the truth for one. Like the, the the topic of discussion and research might be a bit vague, but that's probably because the it was discussed as as kind of vague. This is more like uh, I have some interesting ideas uh, on some applications yeah. for this and this. And he's he's in medicine, so I assume it's medicine. But it's like generally, it's that's that's what the plan is. All right. Yeah. The it all reads out to exactly what it says on the tin, basically for you, Colonel. I've not lied to you, not once. <laughs> <laughs> that 
that's to my own detriment, I want to say. Yeah, that, that's concerning. Um, <laughs> what do you mean? So what brings you down here in my humble abode? Well, seeing as how the Tendarans have been uh, laying claim to some of Starfleet's territory, I wonder if you had a better understanding of the uh, endless frontier that it is. Since you have more, since you seem to have more uh, experience in that direction, I'm I'm not quite up to date with my intergalactic law, uh, but isn't this technically an act of war? In some circles, but also, some, would... some unfortunate misunderstandings can uh, let things slide. Yes, it's quite easy to accidentally blockade a planet of another intergalactic power. Um, You'd be surprised. She says. What, what, <laughs> what, what I what I know about the the Tellarite incident is that is that like public news? Yes, that was that was very public. Uh, and <laughs> very something public. of an embarrassment for Starfleet. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. You seem how you seem to have like a bad stretch of intergalactic diplomacy. And I'm, I have to say, I'm, I'm sorry if I added to it, but I'm not entirely sure I can be blamed for them blockading the planet. What do you know of the territory more coreward? Of the what? Sectors more coreward uh, in this galaxy, in the quadrant. Um, a, a bit here, a bit there. Uh, any, any more specific? If... For instance, I and my ship wish to go exploring more in the core direction. Would you have the right amount of knowledge and talent or experiences to help guide us in, away from certain areas and perhaps uh, stations that are more adequate for the, the ship like this? Well, it's... Is that including or excluding my sentencing? Excluding your sentencing. Hmm. Um, I can probably keep you away from the worst of it, and I should know people who can fill out the rest. Um, I don't want to sell my oversell or undersell myself. I've made many contacts and travels. and Actually, I would have to look at, at the map where I actually have been. I've never, never been really concerned with geography. Um, I've not the deepest connection everywhere, but like a little bit everywhere. Does that make sense? She just nods. And if I perhaps manage to convince Starfleet or uh, Makos that you might perhaps be a better use as a guide than... Uh, your unfortunate past. I can assume that your past is behind you. Uh, Captain, is is that a feeble attempt at blackmail? Not at all. I'm giving you a job offer. You can decide whether or not you enjoy being in a pe penal colony or amongst uh, the back and call of Starfleet. It's really no choice of mine. It's a choice of yours. Well, uh, let's start by saying that your offer certainly intrigues me. But let me also say that I'm maybe reckless. Uh, and he smiles at that. like It's like it's just a sheepish smile. Uh, but I, re I try to avoid veering off into the stupid territory. Uh, the amounts and things I have on board are partly illegal, sure. But certainly not in smuggler quantities. They are not stolen. Some of them are not even legal in the Federation space. Uh, and I was picked up in neutral space. as not many people that would even take a case such as this. Regardless, I can expect if, if I so desire to hire you, they be in your best behavior. With some reason of flexibility. I mean, I'm, I'm the very picture of honesty here. Is this not my best behavior? Hmm. 
I'll consider it. I mean, don't get don't get me wrong, Captain. I'm not. And here he's kind of looking for it. I'm not looking to break any laws or to cause damages. I'm just. Admittedly, taking more liberties and going where scientific pursuit takes me. And f- honestly, if you're going on exploration mission, that sounds like uh, plenty of, of things to occupy the mind. So I, I can promise that I will do my best to behave. I'll take your word for it. I'll give it some consideration. But uh, for the moment, enjoy the comforts of uh, being a guest here. She says, "Yes, this, maybe uh, something to read." But while you're, while you're on the way out, no, like, she just yeah, she just leaves. Yes, it's like no door closes. <laughs> no. That's it for me, GM. I gotcha. Um, as the uh, as you leave, uh, Crichton will send an announcement that the, the level is uh, beginning to close the distance with you, and within a very short time, you and your science officer will be reunited. Um, while, that, uh, while that waits, however, um, events are stirring back on the planet, where we'll shift to a very slightly different uh, set of characters for Theater of the Mind here, going from Saral to Lambeth, uh, Shiro, and Romanov. Um, and of course, let, let us not forget Chief Justice. You said Saral? No, not, not Saral. Uh, Romanov, Shira, and Dr. Lambeth. If I said Saral, it was not intentional. Uh, there, there's only one Saral that we know of. Wasn't uh, Steward with him too? Ensign Steward. Ensign Steward was with them, but I, I did not mention that. Partly because I did not remember if you were having her follow along. So, let me just drop her here. Not the token I wanted to use. We'll copy one over here in just a moment. Um, but yes. Your uh, your pursuit has given way from uh, the the clearing where there were signs of the mortar detonation to the forest uh, or to a forested area. Um, the the major has been consulting a scanner at a few different points, um, but there are uh, Shira as a seasoned Mako uh, or well not Mako but rather as a just a seasoned uh, soldier of the guard. You have, uh, it, you're already picking up signs of, like, where there's obviously been some foot traffic. Um, I would say, if you would like to take a roll on this, I would give you an insight and security roll with a difficulty of two. Oh, insight security. Would yeah. my focus in survival help? Yes. Cool. Uh... Okay, I will do that then, yes. Now what's the difficulty? The difficulty on this roll will be two. Okay, three successes, which means that you score one additional momentum in addition to meeting the difficulty of the task. So... (laughs) Uh, with that, Shira, you are seeing signs here that it looks like uh, the this party, they had a bit of a head start on you. There couldn't be more than three people in this group. One of them is very likely wounded, and they may be carrying some equipment. Um, your best guess would be that they are not likely to be combat effective, um, but... At the rate they are going, uh, they could conceivably, um, like, you could conceivably catch up with them, but if you're not um, careful about it, or rather, if you don't catch up with them sooner rather than later, there's a chance that they could elude you uh, further into the forest. Um, I think at this point, one of the Mako pilots would have already told you they are angling towards... uh, (laughs) 
they appear to be angling towards a fairly mountainous area. Okay, well, we're going to try to catch up then, uh, and I'll calm them and let them know that we're running a little, you know, I'll, I'll just give them the code for we're catching up. Hmm. Just in case communications is being overheard. Yep. Well, <laughs> uh, the major looks to the Makos uh, in the group with you and to you, uh, Lieutenant. Well, we should be uh, we should be careful with these uh, Novans. They tend to be uh, they've been a pretty slippery bunch, and they've. Ah, they, they've taken out Miko squads before, unfortunately. They could be plotting an ambush up ahead. We have Did to they know that they are being pursued? And that may be exactly what they want. Well, as I see it here, they probably didn't figure two of the shuttlecraft into uh, a pursuit here so i think that this is our using those shuttles eff uh, using those shuttles effectively we could probably uh, deal quite a bit of damage to them even uh, take out any positions the ambushes might have uh, is this mago nolan this, or nate nathan i don't remember his name uh, uh it is Paul. Yes. Cole. yes. Yeah. Samuel Cole. Samuel Cole. Yeah. Is this, is this uh, Officer Cole saying yeah. this? Yes. This is Major Cole saying this. Yeah. Um, can Steward look around and try to find any fetishes, totems, representation of like markings for this place that she can catch as we're walking through this place? You mean like. If anything has been specifically marked for, um, or like shows signs of human modification in any sense? Yeah, human modification, um, esoteric belief, uh, warnings, um, I... signals of, of, of like, you know, danger, this is trap ahead, or something like that. Animals, like. I would say, um, give me an insight and science roll, and I'll just set this to difficulty one. Cool. Insight, science, and uh, xenoanthropology. Uh, yeah. Okay, that's two, two successes, so that will give you one additional success. Um, the... So far as you can tell, the it, there doesn't appear to be any sign of like elements posted here that would suggest traps of any sort. Um, indeed, the with what Sheer is pointing out, uh, the the path seems to be very direct to this point. If the uh, you know it would have made sense certainly for the Novans if they had plan uh, had more time to plan something out, perhaps that they would have. Uh, done something with this or maybe if they were in a well enough state to run um, more effectively if they weren't wounded they might have led them down a different path conceivably um, but it seems as though whatever whatever plan they had it just seems to be to get them to a particular location as directly as possible if there is a trap along this route it does not seem to be here Okay. Um, no other notifications of, like, civilization nearby or any uh, religious uh, effects? Nothing of the sort. This just seems to be a, sort of a wilderness area. And from what you remember, though, it, it is worth noting that, uh, like, with the xenoanthropology, would probably have an understanding of uh, the, the Novan offshoot culture. Uh, so right. you would have a good idea that they were actually... Um, <laughs> They were more used to dwelling in subterranean environments than they were in forested areas. So anything that they would do here would be, it would be considerably less likely that they would make that type of modification. Okay. Would they use the ground, come out of the ground, so to speak, cave entrances? Uh, 
that's definitely possible. Okay, well, I'll pass um, that observation around. Hmm. Because I was not Xenobot. You know, uh, I'm going to spend uh, a momentum, if you guys don't mind. Um, to ask a further question with my Xenobot botany focus, um, given the dirt beneath us and both plants and sediment around us, um, can I try to spot where the next likely uh, good place to set up a uh, a golfer hole, golf golfer hole, uh, would be? Uh, so the this forested area, it seems like the it seems like everything here is a bit uh, it's a bit thicker. Um, or like the the roots are very dense, and ev uh, everything here would be sort of uh, it'd be difficult to burrow down too deep for a trap. Let's say. Um, sure. And the the patterns suggest like a lot of. Uh, Gra like the forest floor is fairly visible there's a bit of leaf coverage but not a whole lot um so are it's, the roots are the roots very widespread is it much like it it looks like it these trees seem fairly old and of good size um you are nearing an area where uh geologically that might it might be a little easier to link up with a cave system in some way so that's it's definitely a possibility the further you go along. Um, but for now, the the forested area uh, that you're in seems to be uh, fairly secure from some of that. With respect, Major Cole, we're not the British Empire and these are not Zulus. We're not going to massacre them because of outdated technology, are we? She says, they are, if anything, just as much, if anything, they seem more off foot given where we are right now. I think this is a good time to get an approach and try to communicate. And so I'll forgive you because you don't seem to be the most uh, security-minded type, but... Re eh, if there's any reason for a massacre to happen to them in particular, then they'll have more to do with justice for those they've already taken down. I don't mean to do that, but I certainly uh, we uh, I don't see us being able to let up on them when they've uh, eh, when they've so grievously uh, injured the settlement. Because that conversation is reason, er, that conversation is original in our species. She says under her breath. Yes, yeah, cycle of violence and what have you. <laughs> anyway, yeah, uh, she'll just look over to uh, Shira and uh, Romanov. Where yeah. to now, sir? We keep uh, following them. Yep. Uh, at this point, uh, if I could actually ask for our eye in the sky to give a quick roll here, uh, one Mr. Willie D. Justice, uh, give me just one reason and science roll, difficulty one. And if anyone wants to roll for a shuttle pod, then sensors and science can also assist. Oh boy, this is not uh, Chief Justice's strong suit. <laughs> Chief Justice uh, prefers to. Uh, it, Chief Justice is less about uh, looking before he leaps and just uh, flying on instinct. Uh, well, you you can at least see that there are Novan biosigns still ahead of them. Uh, they're probably uh, like on the further end of the forested area, but they are easily in range for the for the away team to catch up. Okay, so basically everything looks uh, looks normal to him then. No reason to report anything back down to the ground? Yep. All right, he resumes listening to uh, the scorpions or something over the, over the stereo in the yep. shell pot. 
Yep. Uh, a comm line is active, so somebody's communicator has. Uh, it, it sounds like somebody has a bat. Uh, has uh, some classic hair metal as a ringtone. But anyway, the the group continues, and after cutting through some fairly dense brush, uh, you find yourselves moving into a proper map. Uh, so let's let's make you visible there. You guys are want, gonna want to uh, scroll down here and. Let's oop. Where did you go? You are not on the bridge of the Aegis. Uh, you are. Okay, we're going to move the bridge for a moment and then. There we go. Now you are on the planet. Not just on the planet, Yay. but on, a, uh, on what appears to be a proper map. Uh, let's get also, let's get those Makos involved. Uh, so, Shira Ro uh, and Romanov, you find your, uh, well, Romanov, you said you were going in the rear here. Um, so I'll place you back here. The Major is on one side. Uh, Doctor, I guess we'll put you right in the middle. Uh, and... Meanwhile, um, the Mako team is advancing from another side of the opening here. Um, you find what appears to be a fairly open area starting to slope upwards. There's a, a visible ridge on the north and some rocks uh, that appear to be up on some sort of mounded, uh, like, basically sort of mounds with boulders atop them. Um, the area is dense uh, with the or with brush, leaves, and other types of uh, sort of foliage providing a bit of uh, a bit of cover for where you would uh, where one might uh, if one were to lower themselves to the ground or nearly prone. Um, you hear the sounds of some shouting and I would dare say some of you can even make out that there are um, figures in the distance, uh, all three next to each other. But if somebody wants to take a closer look, I'm going to say that's uh, one more insight and security. Um, I'll go check. Okay. You can, can I either. Check from my distant position. Uh, so anyone checking just from there uh, can do so at a difficulty of three with insight and security. If anyone decides to move closer, I will reduce that difficulty to two. However, I am going to spend threat in order to uh, slightly increase the complication range. Even though I'm way in the back, I'll take a shot at it. Uh, it's inside in what? Security. Uh, yeah, so this is for all of us. Uh, anyone who wishes to take a look here. I'll take a look. I'm looking at more at their uh, what they're wearing any sort of cultural differences uh, trying to find assess the leader or um mentality of this group kind of insight and science instead i will allow for that and i'll allow anthropology to come into play uh, also you have i'm going to say you have uh, mako's coming up in reserve here let's scroll this down a bit i don't have an icon for anthem steward yet so um yeah, let me, uh, I'm just going to move over a science token here. Uh, so, yeah, Steward, you aren't getting much from your location. You are probably near the uh, back of the pack as well, not being a, uh, not being particularly equipped for the 
tactical nature of what is likely about to happen. Uh, I like, mean, again, I'm I'm not rated. I'm not rated for fi- for combat. So yes, yep. no violence, please. All right, uh, Romanov, you can at least make out that. Um, You can, at the very least, make out that there are, um, they seem to be, uh, the three figures are next to each other because two of them are supporting uh, the third one in the middle here. He seems to, uh, they seem to be moving at a very slow pace as they try to help him. It, it, he might even have a limp of sorts. Okay. I yeah. will make sure everybody knows that. And, I'll uh, I'll I'm, move closer to them to take a look, and I'll spend a momentum to uh, sorry, momentum. Uh, sp- give you a fret to gain an extra dice. Okay. So, go ahead and take that roll there. Beautiful. All right. Four yeah. successes. With four successes, that is going to give you. Um, Uh, okay yes so that will give you a clear insight uh they appear to uh be in very sort of rough dress something that uh, looks like maybe more natural indigenous type wear for them um what is out of place however are the large uh mako style packs that they are carrying and even signs of uh weaponry, uh, some equipment that appear to be just kind of all slung about them. Uh, They are very delicately trying to move along here. Um, And you you can make out very, uh, like, just slight indistinct chatter between them. Uh, One of them calls out and... uh, it like seems to be shouting up toward uh, up ahead towards someone or something. Um, you don't know exactly what's going on there. Um, GM, I'm yes. also keeping my perceptions aware for possible encirclement. Once we get closer to these guys, mm-hmm. that you know this could be that somebody might move around us and try to encircle us. Okay. So I'm playing good rear guard. Yep. I'm trying to understand their language. Um, I mean, probably fairly close to regular human speak. Yes, yes. They, the colonists mostly spoke English, and they have a few unusual idioms, but they, uh, the language drift hasn't been so considerable. Okay. Anyway, uh, with that major What's the name of the science girl again? Uh, the the Stewart. one who's gotten Stewart. The one you guys dragged into this field, uh, apostle battle. Maybe we'll let you. Yeah, 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 that <laughs> one. Um, I'll get on a comm and just uh, speak to the uh, Sergeant Hawkins in the Mako team. Hold back. Weapons on stun for now. Yep. Uh, the the Makos will comply and uh, just crouch down, rifles at the ready. Um, did to go well, and have a talk with them. I, I can't say I'd advise that. Better to stun first and ask questions later. Hmm. Well. Probably never met an Andorian before. I'm vaguely familiar with you. (laughs) Or your people. Yeah. Uh, You're vaguely familiar. They're completely unfamiliar. So, on how they react. Oh. He, uh, before he can take a moment to think, you have the opportunity to act here. Um, yeah, I'll uh, have my pistol holstered. Face uh, pistol holstered and my 
um, what's it called? Ushan Tor. Is it Ushan Tor? Yep. Just a, just at my side, and I am going to pop up out of cover and uh, walk towards him slowly and say, "Hello there." <laughs> One of them turns back. Ah, General Kenobi. Ah, oh, damn it. I can... <laughs> the meme was too strong. Anyway. <laughs> the negotiator. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, to be sure, Craig, you are a bold one here. And let us let me just see how the Novans are going to take this uh, when you show up here. Let's, mm, that'd be control security and i think that i'm going to spend a threat here to increase their complication range all right and oh well, that's one keeping their cool okay they are in spite of their injuries, they are man. Uh, when they turn on you, uh, they have weapons at the ready, but they don't make an immediate move here. They see a and they see a blue-skinned, white-haired lady moving towards them. <gasps> Stay back, Sky Demon. All right, all right. I'll stay here. Um, you seem got one of uh, your friends there is injured. We, uh, you cannot have him. You cannot have any more. I'm not after any more. I um, kind of noticed attacking that uh, settlement that way. They're just... Uh, you can get the sense they're just kind of barely hanging on here uh, but they, they look at you a bit of desperation in their eyes we uh, we will have it back for our people you will uh, you will not deceive us with more shale well I certainly don't want to deceive you with shale return your people I, to I, the I, skies I, and return ours and just, just to, just to check. Have you seen any? You say my people. Is it uh, the uniform or is it the sky uh, demons? The sky, the sky demons. So people who've come from the sky, obviously. You will. Uh, you. Uh, oh, we, just, just, just so you know, we do have a doctor. If you want someone hello. to. to yes. Uh, oh dear! Another voice. Does the uh will this be enough to set them off? One of them desperate. Uh, one of them looks over and says, "His blood runs. He is leg broke. He uh they could assist." No, no, no. Uh, it is all shale. One of them uh fails the role. Shale. Of, one I of think them shale. <laughs> He's going to raise a uh, weapon kind of in that direction. The complication... It, it, he doesn't fire because he didn't score a complication, but he is going to call out... Other... Uh, sky demons are here! Yep, other, other sky demons are, are here. I mean, they're just people I don't really... Uh, sky demons is kind of derogatory, but... Um, <laughs> As, but this... as far as I, as far as I'm concerned, I'm just trying to understand is why you're fighting that uh, this settlement over there, and why you decided to lob a few mortars. Also, how you got the mortars? <laughs> that's also an interesting question, but that's currently less important right now. Um, I'm trying to think of anything I can help but assist with. Mm. Uh, As this is going on, uh, one of the uh, 
Novins has kind of gestured to take the other one and try to help them along as they try to stand their ground here. We, we uh, are just we are just as terrified about what is stolen from you as you are. We are trying to bring your people back, but we cannot <laughs> if you are attacking the peop the sky people that wish to help you. We uh, are the Earth as much as you are. That is most assuredly, Shale. We are one people, and your sky demons have taken us. You will not have more back. As you, you describe these sky demons who took your people, I mean, obviously they don't look like me, yeah. and I'm not sure they were wearing this kind of clothing, were they? Um, as you say this, Another uh, set of figures appear on the ridge uh, with weapons uh, leveled and at the ready. Yeah. Yeah. Drop, uh, drop your weapons, Sky Demons! Yeah, look, I'm already not holding my weapons, so... Um, um. The rest of, the, the, rest of the uh, Sky Demons certainly won't be dropping theirs, and they do kind of have you outnumbered. But, um... But I just want to talk. Uh, so you're throwing around this term sky demons. I'm I'm not from here, obviously, and I frankly don't really know what to sky demon describes other than people from not from this planet. If we uh, wish to kidnap you, will we not have done so already? We wish to talk and only to talk. Like... As certainly something is shale upon here between us. Someone wishes to for us to fight and for you to be harmed. We want nothing more than to bring peace and for you to be as living as much as uh, you have been. Do you see us armed? Do you see us firing at you? Killing you? Or do you see us talking? That is not shale, is it? We'll see if the uh, how receptive the Novan leader is to this. I am pumping in one more threat for a complication here, or to increase the complication range. Oh God damn it! Full success and a <laughs> failure. Mm, interesting. God damn it. Complication, no. but a success. Can we spend? Two momentum to nope that that uh, complication. Mm, I suppose technically that is something that you could buy off. Would that be fine with people? Yep, very much. All right. Okay. If Pray, um, if what you say, uh, if you truly mean yourselves to not uh, to not cast shale, then you uh. <laughs> Perhaps uh, one among you can prove yourselves. You will... Uh, one of you will come, unarmed. And we, uh, we will take them. The remainder of you shall return. Leave your weapons behind and uh, return to the settlement. If you speak true to return our people, then maybe we can return yours. Understand that we amongst us have people who are equally as angry, equally as upset, given this fight, this violence. So one of us does not speak for all of us. But I... But she looks over to Shira. If it's fine with you, Lieutenant? I mean, I'll, I'll happily go along. I'm kind of curious about these folks, and I can help their, their guy... We both can go, if Lieutenant. Needs help while I'm off with them. Yep. And I think I'm going to go ahead and drop two threat here to introduce a complication because as the oh, as God, it seems cool. that you are making some headway, a single pulse of a uh, of a particle rifle bursts out, soaring just over the head of the one. Uh, the one Novin that has stayed forward to try to interact with you. Um, can I can I shoot 
Cole. You can attempt to, as he's... Uh, Assuming it was Cole who shot, rather than... Uh... It, it was indeed Cole. Oh, wait, he's got the... Uh, his phaser rifle's got the accurate quality, so... Or part God of the rifle, rather. So I can at least re-roll one of those D20s. Uh, let's roll that. And... One. Oh no! Oh. Today is indeed a good day to <laughs> oh, die. <it> definitely misses. <laughs> definitely misses. Um, I'm I'm actually wondering whether that shot inadvertently, uh, technically, uh, he was aiming over here, and I realized that he'd have to shoot kind of around a corner. So, I I think I have to roll severity to see whether this accidentally hits you, Shira. Okay. Cool. Okay, uh, low a low roll on this will be um, will be a hit. A high roll will be um, or rather a low roll on this will be just hitting a rock. A high roll will be um, it's uh, an endor. Yes, yes, that's that's how the Star Trek Adventure stuff works. Okay, so it just hits it, it grazes the top of this rock here, sending up a great puff of uh, like dust and debris. Uh, that is enough to spook the uh, Novan here, however, who just levels the phase pistol that he has. Uh, it actually, yeah, it is in I, fact. I, like I, a... I want to try to shoot Cole before the uh, the other guy does. Uh, well, Obviously, I'm if, you, if you want to spend, I guess you can spend two momentum to keep the initiative, since it was. Uh, is he really yourself. taking our initiative? God damn it, Cole. Because uh, Stuart's Stuart's doing really well for not being rated for combat. Uh, would you guys mean taking, or should we wait? Should we wait? Uh, let's let's wait. Okay, okay. because we'll wait. I think we're all surprised by the actions. Yeah. Yep. The the Noven is going to see Shira just out in the open, closest sky demon that, as they consider it, take a shot at you. Um. The phase pistol shot is going to graze more or less the same rock, but it's going to be uncomfortably close. Um, combat has now begun. Hey, cool. Um, I'm. If you don't mind, I'm gonna go first since I'm the one completely exposed to no, literally no, everything. No, go for it. Go for it. Yeah. Just shoot Cole and surrender. <laughs> Honestly. Uh, yeah, hmm. you could do worse. Could do worse. Uh, let's see. Oh, I, could, I could just go ha hand to hand. I mean, almost shot me in the back there. Um, yep, yep. Uh, hmm. I mean, that has somewhat invoked her Shearer's ire here. Um, uh, so, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Um, uh, sorry, I, 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 ju I just saw the Chief Justice picture. Yeah, uh, um, yeah so I think uh, Shira is going to suddenly feel that uh, old Andorian temper suddenly rise, that this man was so completely stupid that, one, he couldn't hit his intended target, two, he almost hit me, and three, he was... He deliberately sabotaged uh, negotiations that were actually going well. So, yeah, she's going to uh, draw uh, Ushan and just charge at Cole. Okay. You... I'm going to charge, leap over the rock, and fucking tackle him with the Ushan. Okay, so this will be daring and security. It will be contested. Good. Let's buy a extra dice with fret. Uh, with fret. Okay. I've got a hand-to-hand -hand combat focus. I'm going to re-roll that uh, zero with uh, my bold security. 
Although that said, I did have the... Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, with the bold security. I'll re-roll that. Zero. There we go. Nice. Very nice. Okay, so four successes. I'm going to put one of those threat that you gave me back into... Um, into buying coal and additional die. So he moved from melee, shifting his uh, rifle into more of a bludgeon type thing. And oh, oh, that's that's very bad. That is only one success against the four that you uh, landed there. So that is going to be three successes. Uh, I've spent you're... the past few weeks training against Makos. I know what they can do. Yep. He hasn't uh, the... spent the past few weeks training against an Andorian Imperial Guard. Yeah. Well, so certainly you have that on Cole. Um, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> it's actually a little baffling to you, um, uh, to you, Shira. Or as you close the distance with this, uh, what should be this seasoned Mako operative, um, the the attempt to swing the rifle butt at you. Everything about this man's move is uh, moves are certainly they're they're not as fluid or they're clumsy by Mako standards. Um, he gives a premature swing, um, faster than you would have expected, but uh, certainly premature. And before he can bring it back into a uh, back into shape for you to be able to act, he is. Uh, it, like he has left an opening for you to slash at him with the Ushan Tor. Cool. Um, we get. Do we get momentum from that? You do. Which I am about to award here. That cool. would be three momentum back. Nice. Okay. So. Oh, there it is, Ushan Tor. Your um, D plus weapon damage. It's got Vicious One. That's quite vicious. That is pretty vicious. Uh, sorry about that, guys. Uh, something just came up for a moment, but I'm back, and yes, that is exceptionally vicious. And I believe that the Ushan Tor also has the deadly quality. Were you going for murder with uh, this uh or was the idea to were you were you trying to do a non-lethal cut i'm try <laughs> so, someone uh, flips I, over the sign last last since last sandorian killed a human to zero you have in your, you, in you have your incapacitate him um I think incapacitated if it's a particularly horror wound. Yeah, I don't want to kill him. The captain's eyes are looming over you. <laughs> don't wanna, I, I, I don't want to kill him. I, think that, I don't want to kill him. I'll say that, but if it's a vicious wound, then we've got a doctor nearby who can help out. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> cut, cut off his hand? Yeah, to, uh, to, uh, let's, let's say she's she's trying to disarm him first with the with the slash. Okay. Literally? <laughs> yeah. no, this, this isn't quite the Star Wars galaxy, though. I, don't have a, like I mean, you roll like it is. <laughs> okay, so the idea is to try and disarm um, Olshira. I'm going to say that um, as he tries to swing the guard back in... Um, you could go. You could try to go for the wrists, basically, or you could try to slash at the arms, um, like slash at an arm in order to deal him a very grievous injury. Let's go with the. Let's go with arms. A bit more fleshy. Okay, so slashing at one of the arms, there is just a. a you cut through the uh, the mesh fiber of the. Um, rather the fiber weave of the Mako uh, uniform and cut deep into the, uh, one of the muscles. Um, there's just a horrible shriek as the, as like you think that you effectively nick a, uh, you effectively nick an artery um, and he just 
cries out like horribly. Um, he is going to spend, however, a determination um, in order to let's see. First, I actually I need to check and see. Okay, yeah, geez, that would be two injuries. Um, he's going to ignore at least one of those by. Um, wait, wait, wait. That's the wrong character sheet. It's this one that we want, and okay, so that would only be one injury still with that. Um, he is going to resist two of those, uh, two points of stress, and uh, take a total of ten, um, and he is going to invoke a value in order to resist the other damage, uh, the other point of damage here. Um, but I am going to give you that something very strange happens. Uh, Shiro, when you go to slash the arm, uh, the you do initially get a bit of a spray of red. Um, as you look back at the Ushan that has drawn uh, quite a bit of blood there, there's an unusual color change, a sort of brightening, and the hue changes... Uh, quite considerably uh, it's it's not quite settling on something but it goes from it seems to go from the red uh, the deep crimson of a more human appearance to shifting kind of across a color spectrum to something much well, an iridescent thing yeah um it seems to finally settle on um uh, like something sort of uh, it seems to settle on something a little more closer to uh, purple at first before kind of shifting around that whatever is going on here this is just shifting right before your eyes um, and with the with the fact that he was able to resist the injury there um, yeah Cole may not be able to handle his rifle anymore but he says it will regret that Andorian, and he's going to go for, uh, let's see, it looks like he still has some Mako gear on him, so that is going to be a, uh, he's going to run Daring and Security again, uh, actually, let me do a roll here, uh, Reason and Security, I'm going to determine what exactly he tries to do here. Okay, yeah, he he he's reading the room now, or the uh, the open plains, as it were, <laughs> and he is going to he's basically going to just book it out of here, realizing that he is in bad sh like he's in very bad shape. So he is yep. Run he's, away. Yep, he's going to take a sprint. He leaps up uh, and. His good arm actually manages to catch a tree, and he swings in a way that would suggest a degree of acrobatic and athleticism that you would not expect. Uh, but he is, like, just about gone at this point. If somebody wants a chance to intercept, then you can. one of you might be able to take a shot, but it is going to Shoot be Shoot him! Uh, Romanov has your shooting. Do these run off? Uh, you are muted right now, Romanov. Brian. 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 Sorry, I hit mute. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I didn't want that. There was somebody talking in the back. That's all right. Fair enough. Here. Okay, I didn't want to distract you. Yes, I yeah. want to show you that was my plan. And if you could explain the damage mechanic, I would really uh, appreciate it. I'm going to roll now. So I will take a shot at him. Okay. So we can throw and, dice. We have we have a full dice pool or a momentum pool. Okay, then I'll take one momentum then. Okay. I am roll. setting the difficulty to three as he uh, as he is in motion and like. You could also buy it. You could also buy a second dice. Yeah, you, you can also buy a second dice. You can also just use uh, determination. Okay. Um, do you guys want me to spend the momentum or just use determination? Use both. We gotta okay. put 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 this body down. That sounds good. Let me see. I'm going to use uh 
let's see. Uh, Revenge is a dish best served cold. <laughs> uh, and um... so that'll give you an automatic critical success. You can spend um, one uh, one momentum to buy one additional d twenty. You could spend um, three I'll... to get two. Yeah, three to get two additional d twenties, and you could go with your entire pool to buy a full three additional d twenties. Well, I don't think we want to tap the pool. Uh, do you guys? Oh, want we, to... We're full on the we're full on momentum. So. Okay. So yeah. How much do you guys want to spend on? Use three. This? Use three. Okay. Use three. Then I'm rolling. Control four dice. and yes, four dice plus an automatic critical success. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and make the task roll now. Uh, I don't have any applicable focuses. But that is still five successes. Uh, I have to ask, uh, I, I presume that phase pistol was on stun? Yeah, because that was what the standing order was. Okay. So, that is a non-lethal attack. Uh, go ahead and roll damage for me. Okay. And of course, there's, you know, the critical successes. Uh, yes, for a total of five successes. Okay. Which is enough to still net you back two momentum, uh, in other words, uh, Sheriff, you could drop one of those. Oh, yep, yeah, of course. Okay, and I'm using the EM44. Uh, you should have a phase old. pistol at this point. If okay, not, I then should... allow me to allow me to modify that for you. Yes, please take over and modify. Okay. Thank you so, much. so that'd be. You lose the inaccurate and uh, the inaccurate quality and area effect, but you do gain an additional challenge die for damage. So go ahead and roll that. Okay. Okay, here we go. Phase pistol. And uh, the qualities are just one H. Uh, just basically, you just need to click the uh, com badge symbol there next to the. Okay. okay, so that is going to be. That should inflict just enough stress on him in order to inflict a final injury. So you catch him as he's going down a tree. He. You, you, let... you, so how much damage did he actually take? Because I was just wanted to understand the system okay. a little. Yeah, yeah. So the that would inflict ordinarily five points of stress, which would be sufficient for an injury. However, he okay. is resisting two of those points, but um, he had already taken enough stress to where the remaining three points uh, that you dealt him were enough to complete his stress track, which is enough to um, deal an injury. I've been playing it now to where uh, the stress basically accrues instead of you having a full set of points. I think that is more how Modifius intended it. Um, so. Sounds good. Thank you for explaining. I want yep. to double check and understand it. He falls to the ground and uh, into some brush here, just a little bit concealed. I'm going to make a move so I have him in my visual distance, and I'm keeping my weapon pointed right at him. Well, he's slight, he's a bit obscured by the brush, and when you think that you make some sort of some uh, some sign of him, uh, that is when. It seems to illuminate and disappear before your eyes. Holy crap. It's got beamed away. Oh, uh, check my scanner. Did somebody just beam him away? Uh, that did... Uh, well, that did seem to happen. Um, that would probably be a task, though, to check, so... Yeah. And... Okay. Un there's one other problem here. Um, Whistling combat. Yeah. The the Novans have uh, been mostly undercover, but most of them haven't seen what's going on, so another per uh, another person is going to fire a shot downrange in Shira's direction. 
I don't think I'm behind a rock. Yep. And it, they, the hit is going to firmly land, not even on that rock, it's going to hit this rock. Um, that rock's been taken a beating. That's three hits. <laughs> yep. With, with Which our rock? turn, uh, she will raise up and drop the phase pistol. All right. All right. We surrender. Uh, so Steward's running forward in order to offer surrender. Yep. Okay. And uh, try to tie this down a little bit. You know, you know, cool thing, cool heads a little bit. Okay. Uh, they they hold fire for a moment. Uh, Shira on the um, your communicator chirps, um, and it's the Makos seeking to reach out to you. The squad you brought from the ship, that is. Uh, yes, Orkins. LT, are we? What what's going on up there? Are we? Are we? Eh, are we going in? Do, do you want us to stay in reserve? Stay in reserve. We might have to do a fight in retreat out of here. Keep weapons to stun. Acknowledged here. Um, and yeah, so as you bark out those orders, um, one of the um, one of the Novans calls out, you all, uh, you all surrender, and uh, I, it, there's kind of some chatter up there. You drop your weapons. We will take the. Uh, we will take the one and abide by our agreement. Bring our people back, Sky Demons, and we will bring yours. And the other one shouts out. We need. Out the... We need your help to find them. But we 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 agree. Would two be fine? You may... got a wealth of volunteers. Our doctor can tend to your injured. Yep. And That's both uh, himself, both Dr. Lambeth and Ensign Steward will go unarmed. Send your send your two and we will meet you back at the we will meet you back at the settlement to discuss things if we find you uh, if we find you to be true. Doctor, I just need your help for one second before you go over there. Oh yeah, sure, no problem. I'll hold uh, out my Ushantor. Scan the blood on this. Will do. Um, you know, I think you'll agree by the colour that's not human. I'm, I'm told humans bleed red. Yeah, usually, yeah. Uh... Okay. So what, what role can I do to... Doctor, give me reason and medicine with reason a medicine. difficulty of four. Can I assist? I do have a little bit of medical knowledge. Um, are you looking over his shoulder in order to um, best assess the scanner here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can give me some expertise and general advice on how alien blood works. I will accept reason and medicine as well. Okay, cool. So, can I... Um, is everyone going to be okay with me spending three momentum to get two more dice? I'm fine with that. Go yeah. for it. Okay. I figure out who's been... F oh, shit! Yeah! All right. Oh, wow. Jeez. That went very well. Five successes. None for me. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Didn't need it. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Lambeth, you can... Um, you find initially that uh, the scanner wanted to tell you, much as with earlier, that um, these are... that the life signs were human. Um, however, it... It initially starts spitting out the same sort of error messages that were uh, that you were getting uh, with this more active sample um, 
or the sample in this size and in greater quantity and with a more focused effort and, of course, with a bit of Shira's advice, you are finding that there is some very strange stuff going on chemically with the uh, blood sample here. Um, there are extensive signs of some sort of um, genetic manipulation that has occurred and that the... There are further signs that there's like just some sort of degradation process going on here, possibly something being... Eh, some parts are reverting back to a more original standard, such that it can, while others are trying to mimic like various different types of uh, individuals. It's kind of... Whatever's going on here has gone just kind of amok here. But there is one thing that you can say for certain, uh, what you can pick out as the base uh, reading there, and I have left that in the roll 20 for you. Ooh. In the chat specifically. Right. Okay. I think... I think we might have... I'll just, like, wave the results at you. I think we might have found our... figured out our Sulaban problem. He used a Sulaban? Carl was a Sulaban? Like According to the blood sample. I mean, it's a tricky blood sample. It's trying to convince me it's human, but... It's not Sulaban. Hmm. Did you... You said you came up... You said that your scanner came up with errors before. Who was that? Who were you scanning then? I might need a reminder on that. Was that just one of the... That that um... was um, back when you were at the settlement. Somebody yeah. that had been injured, that had been dragged off. Um, some shrapnel had been left behind, and there was um, there were signs of... Um, that basically residual blood on that shrapnel. Something you still happen to have in your pocket because you decided to take it with you. In a sample bag, granted. Yeah, can I just quickly double check and confirm that this is the same now that I've figured out how to solve the error? Yep. And sure enough, you are detecting like base sequences that would correspond to Sulaban. Huh. With some thing. considerable genetic modification. So there's a, there were at least two Sulaban. How do we know the entire colony isn't just been taken by Sulaban? We don't. And I think we might have figured out who they said were taken by the Sky People. Yeah. I think it might be all the non noven colonists. Speaking of the uh, Novans, um, Sky Demons, bring your people over and we uh, and return to your uh, home, and we will discuss this. Very yeah, well. let's let's get on with business then. Okay, yeah, you you get going, Doc. Um, I'm gonna yep, have I to should... figure out what to yeah. do from here. Yeah, I'll, um, he'll if he's got a sidearm, which he probably does, but he'll just pass that to Eula as he's. Along. Okay, so Eula, or well, rather uh, Lambeth, Steward, uh, the two of you now disarmed go to join the Novans, um, who immediately will grab each of you by the arm um, and prepare, like, basically they will uh, have a couple empty sacks that they will throw over your heads in order to keep you on the move, and the Novins are going to very cautiously begin to move back um, further towards the direction as, they were traveling. As the sacks about to be reached over, she's um, actually I'm allergic. I'm allergic to certain weeds. <sighs> Never mind. <laughs> slightly, uh, she says, slightly muffled. Anyway. Yeah. So as the the Novans begin their uh, begin their move, um, Shira, you Romanov and your Makos have to figure out exactly what you are going to do next. Yeah, yeah. Would you like some time to do that while we uh, cut back to the level? I I think or it's a great idea to have a scene change. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 
So, as all of this transpires, we move back. Uh, we move back to an area of uh, otherwise empty space, save for the steadily accruing forces uh, of Starfleet that have begun to gather in the area. So that would take us right over here. So the the Aegis has been joined in the past hour by the Level and the uh, Republic, two vessel, uh, two Starfleet vessels. Uh, one, uh, the Level being another Daedalus class cruiser, and the Republic being a smaller Intrepid class. Um, Colonel, at this point, uh, you have uh, just uh, received word that a shuttle pod has uh, completed its docking maneuvers and uh, has brought aboard your... Uh, well, it, this was actually some time ago, I suppose, but your science officer and the captain of the level have uh, both come aboard the ship. So, let's... What do I know about the captain? Not a whole lot. Right. Starfleet type. How long has he been captain? Mm. Probably still longer. Obviously, it's probably more likely still longer than me, but... Um. Seems like he assumed... Com uh, seems like uh, Captain Harold uh, assumed command at some point uh, roughly three years ago. Yeah. still. I'm still a junior in comparison. Yep. 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 Uh, let's... <laughs> Would you like me to go ahead and put you guys on the bridge with them, or um, would you prefer to have met them somewhere else? Um, could be the ready room, could be the them. conference ready room. room. Let's do let's do conference room. Okay, can do. Uh, so, uh, we'll say that you are delayed a few moments whilst uh, the remaining Actually, seat. Actually, ready room, ready room. Okay, so just just the cap, just the captain Patel and me, right? So yeah, yep. Ready room. Uh, so Patel, uh, we'll uh, we'll start our scene off with you. Um, it's been a it's been an interesting few hours whilst uh, you've been on board the uh, the level, uh, a ship at once very recognizable and at the same time with a very slightly different feel. Um, the level has been tasked with more general exploratory duties as opposed to the pathfinding mission that uh, you at least nominally have. The supply run that they are on doesn't really quite fit that, but it's it, still, uh, you know, a not unfamiliar uh, feeling. Uh, Captain Harold is walking alongside you. Uh, I must say... I sir, uh, I've been on uh, some of the Intrepid class vessels before, but they really find a way to uh, really pack us in here, don't they, uh, Commander? It certainly does take some getting used to, Captain. But uh, it, it, you know, if you find a way to distract yourself with with a good book or or something of that nature, uh, yeah, you you get used to it. Yeah. Uh, there's a momentary pass through of the bridge where you, uh, where uh, Harold and Patel will pass by. Um, out of habit, like Harold is going to go for just a straight open button, but then thinks better of it and chimes the request to enter. Uh, ship's Come a little, in. Ship's a little too familiar for me. Um, and the door opens, and we find ourselves. Uh, Let's see, in the ready room here. The door opens, and before you, uh, Colonel Sharp, you see the familiar face of Commander Patel and an uh, another face uh, in the same sort of jumpsuit, uh, jumpsuit as you, uh, with the with gold command stripes on the four pips to indicate a captain. He's a tall, uh, slightly thinner, you think maybe... Uh, this man has either spent a bit of time in zero G or otherwise, uh, you know, doesn't seem like he's gone through as much of the PT or hits it quite as rigorously, but otherwise, uh, 
a tall. He doesn't, he doesn't... So go, go ahead, go ahead please. Right. Uh, he doesn't have any other signs of like being a boomer or something like that. No, he's just a essentially a very lanky individual, sort of dirty blonde hair, and uh, we'll say bright blue eyes. Is he? Greets you. Yep. She stands up and attention, Captain. Oh. Captain, or do you prefer Colonel? Sorry, it's a bit weird having uh, Makos and command roles on ships. I don't even have them in a security capacity. It's a bold new world, and uh, given the situation, I think you might rethink on that option. She sm- gives a small smile. Uh, I heard Archer was saying much of the same thing. Oh, uh, but yes, uh, what's the... Do we know what the latest is on the situation? Uh, what is the latest right now? Are they still just hovering, uh, keeping over orbit, or what? Yep. Uh, just as this is coming through, uh, Crichton stumbles through. Oh, serious. Oh, sorry, serious. Uh, uh, Captain, I have the latest on the situation. Speak of the devil. Go ahead, Crichton. Yeah. Well, I have been unable to decrypt the. Uh, decrypt the signals from the Tandarans. It seems as though there's continued... Uh, uh, frankly, I'm just having a lot of trouble uh, compensating for the radiation in the area. Um, I can't uh, break the encryption, and our sciences department is having trouble calibrating the sensors precisely enough to get a readout on other activities. They seem to mostly be holding position, but if they're doing anything else, we, we can't discern it. Uh, at the current moment, sir, she's looking over at uh, the captain. Um, we have one lingering, pro- lingering probe within low orbit of uh, Terra Nova, while another I have in reserve behind one of its moons for a potential idea of uh, <clears throat> making them see uh, other options but that idea if you don't mind me conferring to you uh in a moment uh requires us being there presently well, i would appreciate whatever information you can give me and frankly sharp i'll take a lot of advice too i'm not certain uh i know nominally i do have the more advanced commission here but you are also slightly more tactically suited and well he looks like he's about to say something, but then uh, holds his tongue. I would appreciate You're, your... You know, she, seeing that he's about, like, about to say something, she looks over to Ensign. You dismiss Ensign. Yes, sir. And then waits. And then says, we can talk openly. Uh, he, it, Harold glances to uh, Commander Patel. Um, uh, yeah, should I, uh, should, I, should I be going to, Captain? Or... Um... No, it's fine. If that's fine with you, Harold. With all due respect here, Sharp, um, it is... It, you don't... Sorry, Captain Sharp. Or Colonel Sharp. It, in any case... Uh, Sharp or Lillian, if you like. We're both captains, as you said. Well, then you can call me Aldo, and... Uh, if we're... Out, if, if we're willing to drop the pips for a moment, as it were, um, I don't hold it against you at all. Be uh, the way that you got to this position, but there are probably some other Starfleet captains who'd be a little bit concerned uh, dealing with a jumped-up O3 here. She gets a small smile. Completely understandable. Yeah, um... But I think I can fit I can only do my best to fit within the shoes that have been granted me by Starfleet and the Mako, Mako General ship. So um, I have a few ideas and I certainly would like to hear your opinions about them uh, tactically, diplomatically. Uh, I don't wish to come in guns blazing. If anything, I want to make an open discussion with a paranoid and, frankly, very reclusive uh, empire. 
in in this place in this galaxy and certainly while i have more military and uh, tactical i can only try my best to be as thematic as possible yeah. i don't want to create any shakeups uh whether that is being too too reclined or too aggressive so yeah and i imagine that earth is a uh, command going to want us to take a bit of a stand here if they try to assert some claims here there's a lot of people that still aren't terribly happy about alpha centauri back home certainly not and with that i actually have a few ideas um, what you have in mind it's certainly it'll be a bit of a gamble but i think if it goes right we can set up a nice insinuation for any other potential ideas Right, any other potential uh, seekers of uh, having their slice of the pie? Well, I'm... have you? Ever, uh, if you want me to go into detail, I can. But um, she'll uh, she'll say the probe we have uh, behind the moon certainly could do a number of functions, including. Um, I forgot the term. Give me a second. Um, so I want to get the terminology just right for this. If we can set up a thrown field and mass some of the duranium signals we can certainly make a moon base that there wasn't there before and make an insinuation that all of our colonies have such things especially if they can't detect it um by our point leaving yeah. them at a more of a 10 to 1 against hopefully she smiles oh uh captain harold looks a little bit uh Looks a little bit puzzled. Using Thoron particles in that manner, that's... A lot of the work it's I... No more, it's no more than a prank I have seen done uh, on a more smaller c case amongst the Franklin. Huh. You makers are doing some crazy shit out there, aren't you? I'd only been reading theoretical work with that. We have to make do with as uh, little as possible. She says, reclining back on her chair. And I, I we make what... the Franklin look like a a uh, a st strike battle cruiser when it's a little more than can shoot pop guns here and there. Uh, well, if you can do that, we might be able to at least convince the Tandarans to negotiate as opposed to retreat here. Or, or well, if not retreat here, maybe uh, it, at least. Give us a moment to get a more of a positional advantage before we engage them. Uh, Captain, with such a bold move upon the Tandarans, I'm not, and I say this as politely and careful as I can, I'm not seeking a simple negotiation. I'm seeking a surrender with a negotiation, she says. Huh. Well, that's an... Uh... It's an interesting plan there, and I'll, I'll do what I can to make sure the level's ready to engage. Um, Mr. Patel, if, uh, well, I suppose I don't want to, uh, I want to step on your toes here, Colonel, um, but if our science um, officers have a chance to coordinate, we might be able to get a sense of this. I, I'll have my man Forsyth uh, start working on uh seeing what we can do if you can give us the uh, frequency of the probe, so at least we're working with the same telemetry, or if you at least want to relay this. Uh, but I I would like to... Uh, you have a very talented science officer here, and I'd like their eyes on whatever problem we're going into first. If that's... Well, just, just so you know, as much as you've uh, got enjoy his company, he's mine, Captain. She doesn't smile. But I'll let you borrow him, if you want. <laughs> Ah, uh, I, I wouldn't dream of taking him off your hands here as much as I'm sorely tempted. Uh, uh, Harold will 
give it uh, will grin back at you. That being said, uh, your ship, I think, has a slightly better sensor suite than mine, so if you can give us a better sense of what we're going into, then I'd quite appreciate it. There's also concern on the ground as well. Uh, we couldn't get much sensor feed or communication with the away teams at that moment, but there seems sort of large conflict on the colony itself, though due to a more natural... Uh, a natural phenomenon our sensors could not dig within to, onto the planet's surface only, rela only relays as you can see, she pulls out a pad and gives the communications that we got oh. uh, looks like Mr. Patel here is going to have his hands a little full here if we're going to figure this out <sighs> I won't trouble you too long with this uh, Colonel, but I am going to get back to my ship and I guess lament the fact I didn't bring Makos with me. <laughs> uh, Captain, if to further my plan on uh, approaching the Tendorans, could your science department figure out how best to um, remove warp capability on other uh, ships without uh, being too exposed? Some creative space phenomenon or some sort of uh, gas that we can release. Uh, if we can create some sort of subspace interference or uh, do something without taking a shot, then I'll do what I can, but... Um, as subtle as we can make it. Yeah. I want to make sure that they don't go running when we uh, have our moon base target with 140 uh, photon torpedoes. Oh, is that what they're calling them now? It's a little... I like that better than the photonic torpedoes. I, I don't know. And she just shakes her head. Photonic. You, you, you Which... Makos are uh, your uh, the abbreviation side. Uh, that could stick. But again, no. we don't have those torpedoes either. <laughs> it's not so much that we don't have them, so much as making them think we do. She yeah. says, and it's been a long day. Uh, Fair apologize enough. for my poor terminology. That's quite all right. Uh, well, I won't keep either of you. Uh, you have plenty to catch up on, and I have a ship to get ready for, uh, hopefully, just a display of the flag, but possibly combat, so let's tend to what we can. She'll not. If I have any other suggestions, I, I will send them to you, Captain. All right. Okay. Well... Excuse me, I've got to get back down to the Mattingly. Uh, sorry, shuttle. Po uh, one of my shuttle pods here. We we went with more of a theme. <laughs> Certainly, we have to think of our own names. Yep. Thank you so much, Captain. And with that, uh, Captain Harold will depart. She'll look to Patel. Had a safe vacation. Well, it was more of a working trip. You see, I was I was in a conference um, and. Uh... Got got somewhat sidetracked when I was sent for by the level, but uh, but it was nice. Ready for a lot more high stakes? She smiles. Where do you want me to start? She'll hand over the data slate that uh, Crichton gives. For the moment, I have some idea on how to set up the probe, but that will be on the side for you. The current moment, I want you to look at these uh, communications and radiation. See if you can pro possibly even move the probe at a higher orbit without causing detection by Tendarns. Find find a slight, nice sweet spot, would you? I want to know what ha what is going on amongst them and why they're making such a bold move this far out from their territory. Uh, no problem. I'll work with um, with Mr. Crichton on that. And then if you're having a uh, if you're having some trouble or uh, run into a a wall, I want you to work on that probe. Got it. Can't wait to get, get back get back to my old console. And Kieran. Yep, sir. Welcome back. She smiles. Actually, goes back to work. Uh, he he doesn't say anything. He just nods and smiles back and. 
bumbles his way out the door. All right. So, uh, returning to the bridge, um, Crichton will be bringing over some data uh, with an earpiece in his uh, with an earpiece at the ready, uh, but otherwise uh, away from his console for moments of time. Uh, he proceeds to catch you up on some of the events of the day. Um, yes. I, I must say, I uh, I have only uh, spoken with the Vulcan uh, that we took on very briefly, but he's, uh, he's quite the interesting character. We have a Vulcan that we brought on recently? Oh, yes. Uh, Mr. Sorrell, I believe his name was. There's all manner of interesting things that uh, he apparently had on board, some of which has been impounded in the armory. Uh, Purcell's eyes go, go wide a little bit. I, I see. Yes. It doesn't doesn't seem very Vulcan like. Oh well, I I don't know what to make of him myself, but uh, well, there were all manner of uh, all manner of uh, bits of projects that seemed to be in there, and uh, I only got a small inkling of it. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm distracting you. You should probably be uh, working with this. Uh, well, from this distance, I suppose it's a. It would be normally a difficulty five reason on science task, but with the with the probe and our high resolution sensors, or is it advanced sensor suite? I don't remember the talent. Oh dear, I wish the doctor was here. I seem to be coming down with a bad case of meta speak, sir. <laughs> not not a problem, Ensign. I, I think I, I think I get where you're where you're going with this, and I'll reach out and like take if he's got a pad in his hand or something. I'll I'll take it. So it is a reason and science role that you're going to have to perform as you start to, uh, you are uh, working off, um, it seems to be a probe that is uh, located in the orbit of Terra Nova Colony. Uh, it seems that just before the ship went off to warp, uh, the captain decided to drop a, uh, drop a probe and is using an unusual, um, scattering field of sorts that appears to there's some sort of radiation in the atmosphere uh, that is creating a uh, scattering effect that has made communications and sensors uh, extremely difficult uh, use of a transporter is practically impossible uh, from the or from the planet to the atmosphere um, or like at about the mesospheric level basically which would be way too close for the ship to get. Um, but uh, the the probe is situated in such a location that it is also very difficult for the Tandarans to see. So uh, compensating for that field, you might be able to get a better look at what the Tandarans are doing and possibly, as Creighton has been trying to figure out, uh, some way to break the encryption. Um, I guess for the the this first role here, as I was saying, um, this would be a reason and science role, which uh, I'm going to say the difficulty is, uh, I believe, three after the qualities that would, uh, or rather the like advantages that you have in play, or advantage and a talent, that's what it is. Um, the ship may also assist with sensors and science. Okay. Um I'm going to hmm. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna spend uh just one momentum to, to up my dice pool by one. Okay. And I could do more, but that's probably gonna be fine with the assist, so let's give it a shot. Beautiful. Okay. Yep, three successes there. Um, so, with a with a bit of effort, uh, you find that you are able to um, slightly adjust the sensors. Um, scanning down on the planet is still very difficult, or like it's not something that you can easily cut through. That might take wholesale. Uh, frankly, a whole other bit of work in order to do something about, and it's... Uh, 
it would require some uh, fine tuning that you're not certain of how to go about precisely. Um, that being said, you can at least compensate enough for the uh, for the field in order to um, determine that the Tandaran ships are maintaining their position. Um, you're able to get a clearer sense of the signal on the subspace band that they're operating on. Uh, there also appear to be small craft that are departing these ships and uh, assembling in an area in slightly lower orbit, uh, possibly on a vector towards the surface. Is that like, can I tell what size the, the smaller ships are? Uh, they are slightly larger than the shuttle pods that you have. They could probably, if the, based on what you would guess to be their likely internal layout, they could probably hold between six to eight individuals, including and, uh, operators. How many of them are there? Uh, at this point, there are, it looks to be five of them with a sixth in the process of joining in. Okay. Um, yeah. So I, I route whatever uh, whatever like sensor data that I need over to to Crichton to have him maybe set on maybe trying to crack that code again. Although the signal is a little bit stronger or like clearer. Yep. Um, and I'm gonna get up real quick and, and go back over to the ready room door and uh, I'm gonna knock. I'm not gonna chime. Yep. Uh, Sharp, were you going to continue in there, or did you want to come out and join the uh, join the bridge crew? Um, I managed to work on a few tactical plans of backups in case the bluff doesn't work. Okay. Um, but she'll just say, "Come in." If, if there's a pause there, the knocking like gets a little bit more insistent before before I hear you say, come in. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Patel opens the door and says, um, Captain, I've I'm, I'm had some preliminary success, but I think we have a potential problem. Yes. Um, it, it looks like the Tandarans are, are assembling some kind of a landing force on the planet, and uh, not a small one. She straightens up. How many? Uh, looks like about six ships. I can't tell exactly what they're carrying or who's in them, but they're slightly larger than a shuttle pod, so maybe, oh, I don't know, half a platoon each. Can you get any read on the layouts of the ship, or the uh, armaments of the ship? Uh, I'm going to assume I couldn't do that, right? Um, I'll say that you have the impression that there might be some sort of particle cannons of a sort not too dissimilar from the shuttle pods, but uh, they, assuming equal, you can probably safely assume equal level of armament, um, which by a numbers game would have the shuttle pods left behind there um, outmatched. Okay, yeah, it looks like they're about as armed as, as a shuttle pod are, but there are many more of them. How long do you think it's going to take for them to finish loading? Uh, so there's five of them holding position now with a sixth joining. I'm not certain if any more will be joining. Uh, I was only able to get those six. But it looks like they're they're uh, having a little bit of a meetup in orbit before they all land. As you're talking, she just gets up and slides past you into the bridge. Um, Crichton signal her uh, herald right now that we are leaving. No, we cannot wait. Uh, acknowledged, sir. Uh, I did want to note I had just received a reply from Starfleet Command, an initial message. Um, they are... Well, apparently they're convinced that uh, we might have a few nuclear devices on board that I was not aware of, but then that wouldn't be my purview anyway. Uh, they were deeming us... Uh, They've apparently left flag command of the uh, improvised group to us. So I I guess... I, does, does that make you a commodore now? I'm... Or a major general? Major. Or how does that work? She, ju she just ignores Crichton and says... Uh, she just nods and says, clicks, on to uh, clicks on her 
her bridge uh, communicator or command scene communicator says, Andrew, I need as much as you can into the engines. Uh, copy that. Where uh, we can give you uh, what four or five. Uh, at least for the next several hours. And do what you can to push it further, but that's good enough. So with that, um, Connolly turns back to you and says, uh, Sir, if the level can keep pace with us, that'd be fine, but the Republic's going to be only cruising along at warp 3.5, so we might... Uh, wow. if, are we going to... Can we... Yeah, well, do you want me to set a course that would keep them with us, or are we just trying to get there as fast as possible? I want to get there as fast as possible. Uh, let the intrep. Uh, she looks over to Crichton. Let the intrep know that um, we certainly can use reinforcements when they arrive. Um, hopefully, it won't come to that. But uh, having a nice backup reserve would be nice. I will copy messages to the level and the Republic. Um. Crichton, once you're done with that, I need you to send the signal uh, via the uh, Morse code toward the uh, planetary probe toward anyone who can receive it down below and uh, let them know of the potential attack and repeat it until until give or receive, or receive confirmation. Will do. So uh, Crichton sets to work on this, and the with that the the fleet uh, begins uh, the small fleet that you've assembled begins to set their course and move towards Terra Nova. Uh, back in the uh, go ahead. Actually, add a character. This is something that I saw amongst the reports with Saral. How well did the uh, uh, chemosite work on the engines. How successful was it? Oh, well, he probably got a couple burns, but it might be something that uh, if you injected it in, well, that it would have an effect. But nothing, like, did it show any positive results, or? That's a question for Saral. <sighs> <clears throat> uh, I don't have time for that. What do you mean you don't got time for that? I got landing parties to try to repel in like uh, farther away. I don't have time to ask you go go drop a chemocide off of the intrepid and then you know all that jazz. Um or do I? I don't think I have much choice. Uh <sighs> Yep. Okay. You know what? I'm gonna chance it. I'm gonna get my get my ass up and says, um, she will. Says uh, Patel, you with me? We're gonna go talk to somebody. To hopefully, get that intrepid moving faster. Uh, engine room, hold on the engines for a brief moment. Uh, uh, oh, okay. Uh, calmly says, I I got my hand on the throttle when you need it. Uh, hand break <laughs> yeah uh, so if Patel follows we're going to the um, going to the uh, brig yep right behind okay uh, Patel you follow the colonel down and you arrive in a um, you arrive in the brig where uh, after passing through a couple Mako guards you see a uh, once again, I believe, uh, set out in lotus position, um, or has, would you say Saral has changed his... Uh... <laughs> I feel at this point it's kind of the uh, the Loki. You must be truly desperate to get to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of very bored because I expect the Marcos have been just like stonewalling. <laughs> yep. Just like, ah. The one interesting one left. Yeah. Of course he did. So, yeah, you you see a very sort of uh, wild-looking uh, Vulcan gentleman. 
out in the brig and yep i'll let you take it away from here she'll key the communication that experiment you made with the chemocyte how how useful was it um it showed much promise, but I couldn't figure out the exact ejection procedure for the Vulcan reactor core. To how effective? Oh, do, do, you need, do you need to roll for that, or do you want to, to make something up? I will let you make it up. Uh, I can at least give you a... Um, improving the reactor has a good chance, would say, a Above eighty percent to give an improvement to react uh, uh, warp speed, twenty percent, maybe thirty uh, percent. But there's also a good chance that after that, that ship's not going anywhere fast. That's why I was very hesitant to try it. It ruined the engine, or did it simply? Uh, it's how familiar are with uh, complete particle physics. She looks over to hell. I have a passing familiarity. Uh, to put it the simplest way possible, it just clocks up the matter antimatter uh, injection. It doesn't so much burn out the reactor, but it needs uh, it needs uh, uh, maintenance. It needs to be cleaned. Uh, Patel looks at, at um, Sharp and says, I'm, it sounds right to me. I'm not an engineer, but the, the science is sound. She takes a moment or two to think really hard about this. I have a sh escort ship that needs to be moving a lot faster than needs to be at the current moment. Without the chemocyte, there's, do you have any passing interest in warp engines to help them move just a little faster? Without the chemocyte? Mm, she nods. I would need to take a look at the specifications. I'm not too familiar with Federation vessels, but I can give it a look. And I also need an uh, how desperate we are. We need to get there fast. Now. How much faster? At least another point five. Point three. Yeah, that's a lot in that area of Star Trek, isn't it? Yep. As you understand it, uh, Earth vessels are sub-warp five, mostly. Uh, Vulcan vessels are faster? Uh, up to warp seven in the highest end Ooh. cases. So, how confident am I that I could at least temporarily finicky something together? Well, if you get a look under the hood, there might be something that you could do with it. It might take the chemocyte that you have left, though. Yeah. I mean, I can't promise you uh, without the chemocyte uh, until I have taken a look at the, the entire core and the setup. All right. For the moment, I am putting you under uh, pro uh, probation, as my rule, uh, as captain. But I need you on the Intrepid to actually improve its engines just a little bit more. We can only try. Great. Patel, show him to the um, transporter. I'll, uh, inform, I'll inform the Trepid's ca uh, commander. Patel reaches out and, and keys the button to open the door on the cell. I don't care I'm using every resource I have to get the shit over there. <laughs> <laughs> the chemocyte stays here until absolutely necessary, she says to Sorrel. Well, then we better hurry. Uh, this this way, Mister. Um... There is there is probably like a not necessarily a mad gleam in his eyes, but like excitement. Mm. 
So yeah, as oh, you yeah, let's go. You make your way out of uh, you make your way uh, from the from the brig over to the transporter and the uh, the combi- uh, the improvised fleet is preparing to set off. Um, but let's see. I suppose uh, I have one more thing in mind that I definitely want to do here. First, I would like to ask um, Shira, Romanov, do you have anything that the two of you would like to do, or would you prefer to save whatever your next moves would be uh, for later, basically? Um, or, like, next session as you go back to the colony. If you're doing um... that. I ask only because I figure that might be a uh, complicated affair. Yeah, perhaps uh, perhaps leave that for now. Okay. Let let the Aegis team sort out the Republic's engines. Okay. Yeah, I'm... Uh, yeah, the Republic. There you go. I keep forgetting his name. Um, also, I'm just trying to get Felix into this game instead of just stuck in the brig. <laughs> uh, after, after throwing him in the brig the whole session. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Look, you were a pseudo pirate. It's just one of the things like mm, I'm not I at all. You. I want to make sure you're not touching anything else on my ship. I'm not a pirate. I resent that. I considered piracy and I deemed it unprofitable <laughs> in the pursuit of scientific excellence. Okay. Until you need that scientific ex- excellence, and then you start just you know taking things in need of science. Um, yeah. Sorry. Anyway, uh, in, in that case, let us let us take a look back at the planet, um, specifically in the utter darkness uh, that is currently the view for uh, Doctor Lambeth and Ensign Steward. Um, you have been uh, you have been uh, guided with uh, sacks on your head, basically um, down through uh, to, uh, like. Up and down some hills, um, through uh, through whatever trail they are on, you've had the sound of uh, numerous people alongside you. Um, at a certain point, the the texture under your feet feels a bit different, a little more gravelly or sand-like, um, and the terrain gets a little less even. Um, they are navigating more gingerly with you. As the the two of you can guess, uh, between that, a uh, a drop in the temperature that you can feel, <clears throat> there is good reason to believe that they have brought you into the cave system itself, um, and you are brought down uh, further and further. Um, slight echoes picking up here and there. Um, there's some indistinct chatter among some of the Novans. Um, some maybe suggesting some sort of concern. A few references to the word shale, which uh, Stuart, at least so far as you would know from uh, the xenoanthropological work, they take it to mean deceit or something of the sort. Yep. Uh, <laughs> there's been some further work when you hear an authoritative voice say, Halt! Oh, why, why do you why do you bring the uh, you've brought more from the sky? This, they they can speak on their own accord, but they offer uh, they are offering to return our uh, our people. For we are, uh, She's been seizing the entire time. Yep. That one is. Uh, are they sick? They no, just allergies. <laughs> this one is also a healer. He can help some if we uh, if we are to believe what he says. Yeah, trust me, I can help. Whether is uh, whether is shale or not, that is best. To, uh, we will discern from. Well, we we will let the lead determine how to do this. Can you take these hood offs? I can't even see now because my eyes are just. <laughs> um. 
you uh, you're brought forward a little bit, and as you continue to come, uh, you continue to say something about that steward. Um, you yeah. hear a couple of familiar voices. Uh, well, by all means, don't. Uh, if she's having allergy problems, then don't worry about the. Uh, uh, let's. Well, I suppose if they have a doctor along, then they can. Uh, they might have an antihistamine for them, but something to help. With all due respect, I'd like the chance to speak with them first, Governor. All right. Um, the two of you are guided to a seat, and the bags are pu- uh, pulled Did off. Did it sound like coal, by the way? When yeah, you look like forward, him. sure enough, you see what appears to be uh, Governor Nichols and <laughs> Major Cole. Um, the Major is looking quite well compared to when you last saw him. Uh, Cole, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Ex- I... Excuse me? Uh... Anson? Is it? You just tried to shoot us earlier. <laughs> I think... Right? I don't What's suppose over the dog, the you complain about me having a sample of your blood, would you? Uh, I know what this is about, and I know what this is about, and doctor, if you are indeed a doctor, then yeah, I'm prepared to do that. Uh, much as I'm prepared to bust your ass back down to crewman. Oh, sorry. Very large. Uh... Got a very large uh, nickels here for a moment. Um, whereas um, this version of... Uh, or well, I'll tell you what. Um, Cole is going to step forward, and he's going to extend out the arm that you were certain uh, Shira had sliced up pretty badly. Um, and he's just going to roll up his sleeve uh, with no signs of any sort of injury. And as you've got it's eh. just for the sake of completionism, give him a stab and slash stick a needle in him to <laughs> Well As you pull you pull out a uh, you pull out the requisite equipment to do so, uh, you realize that there are uh are all of the Novans in the room have weapons out, so if something were to go awry or be untoward, uh the Mako's Overly confident gesture, perhaps. Um, if you were to take advantage of that, then he would have uh, been able to. Uh, somebody would be get uh, somebody be getting shot here, to be sure. Uh, but yeah, with that, you are able to take a blood sample, and if you're going to compare it to a scanner, uh, reason and medicine, difficulty one. Yeah. Um... I can't imagine this is going to be difficult. So, well, congratulations, Doctor! You found your first bona fide human colonist. It would, uh, based on what your sensors are telling you. So, do you have any idea what's going on here, or should I tell you what I think is going on? Well. I can tell you about the. Uh, I can tell you about how uh, most of the population's been abducted, and well, what's left is here in the caves with the with the Novans. Who's responsible? I don't know, but they sure do ma- manage to look like us. Does the name Suliban mean anything to you? Uh, he narrows his eyes a bit. Vaguely, I think. Yeah, alien species. They can do some shape-shifting. Oh, lovely. Well. I found... I took this sample of blood from a weapon used to cut someone who looked pretty much exactly like you. And this sample of blood from um, a shrapnel wound of another guy who looked like an ordinary uh, colonist of yours. So, yes. yeah, and they're both Sulebran blood, by the way. 
If anything, there are a pair of you telling us to that um, that uh, you're being attacked by um, well, she gestures. Yeah, we've been struggling against them for the better part of these past. Jeez, oh, I've lost track of the days and weeks at this point. Learning, uh, in any case, he looks to your the patches on your uniforms. Huh, Aegis. That name rings a bell for some reason. Yep, that us. Well, now that you got your ship here, we'll try to get. In, uh, we'll try to get back in touch with your crewmen. Uh, see if we can coordinate with them. I aim right. to retake the colony and find out where they. Uh, <laughs> Where these people are, uh, where our people are being kept, if they're still alive. Uh, We're not done that. yet. About the ship, she says. So, see, she just re she, regales. She, yep, it's like Ensign, you've uh, you've done exactly two things thus far to displease me here. Well, one of them is actually useful. <laughs> yeah, uh, only two. Well, oh, she's only spoken twice. Yeah, she's only spoken twice. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that doesn't seem to stop her normally. Ah, <sighs> this is going to be complicated. We uh, we better get our people ready for whatever the next steps are. Hey, and he looks to you, Steward. And somebody get this woman some allergy meds. I can't even see who's talking right now. <laughs> yep. And I think with that, we are going to... Uh, I think that is as good a note as any to cut out the stream for now and just do the... Uh, or like Set aside the rest of the adventure for next week. Uh, oh man, a lot of shit's going yes. on. You should have informed us about the weakness of your bloodline before enlisting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, how was she supposed? To... Look, Starfleet not tell her that they get freaking burlap sacks over their heads. It's just not in the job description. Exactly. Yeah, you do normally expect them to use like an um, a non-allergenic sack. Yes, yes. Yeah, decent kidnappers only use hyperallergenic utilities. Exactly. What kind of hi what kind of kidnappers are these people? Well, we will Amateur find hour. we'll find out about all that and more next week. Uh, for those on the archives, this is where we are going to leave off. So I hope all of you have a lovely week. Uh, if you ever want to catch these streams live, we run on Saturdays, one p.m. at Eastern Standard Time. And for the uh, for Broken Sword, if you want to catch more Klingon-related fare, we are doing these Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So, hope you enjoy, and have a good day.